el título de la palabra esta tarde, predicadores grandes, predicadores grandes. Y vamos al libro de Mateo, capítulo 25 y versículo 40. Matthew, chapter 25, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Barely I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Heavenly Father, we praise you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your messages that are all through the Bible. We could preach day and night. Three, four preachers could preach the same night and still not preach the same thing because there's so much food and so much to be thankful for in your word. And we pray today that you open up our understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Most of us know the story here. Um, the Lord is going to say on that day, I was hungry and you and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. And uh, I needed shelter and you, and you gave me a place. He said, and they're going to ask the Lord, Lord, when? When did I see you? When did we see thee a hunger, a thirst, and gave you? When did we minister to you, Lord? And the Lord is going to answer and say, in as much as you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So in our in our message today, I want to I want to point out that our bodies, your body, the body that you are walking in is one of the great preachers. It is a miracle. Every child that is in the womb, although the world takes that as, as just a fetus or they want to call it an embryo or whatever they want to call it, in order for them to justify killing that child, that child was a product of what God was manufacturing. What God, a woman by herself could not make a child. A man by himself could not make a child. A man and a woman together, a lot of them can't have children. But it's a gift that God begins to form in the womb of a woman. And this child is a heritage of the Lord. It's his handiwork. And why does uh, the devil want abortion? Is because the devil hates God. The devil hates uh, anything that God is doing. But praise the Lord, if you're alive today... Scientists really don't know what life really is. They know how your body functions and how your heart pumps and the liver and the kid. They can answer all that. But how is it that you are alive today? And what's the difference between a person that's alive and a person that's dead? There is something inside of us that God breathed into us. And we became a living soul. So if you can think, if you can talk. Recently, my wife has been talking about how he, she's listening to a, a minister. And the minister is saying, we are going to have to learn how to speak. There's power when we speak. Things get accomplished by speaking. And I told my wife, I said, well, you're getting your message from another preacher. But this preacher here has been telling you for years, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. God has not only saved the pastor, God has saved every one of you. It, it wouldn't hurt my feelings if you walked in here anointed by the Holy Ghost. Open up your Bible during testimony and say, the Lord gave me this scripture today or yesterday or during the week. And God showed me. I know, I know, I know, I know that I know that while you're doing your daily devotions or whatever, weekly or whatever, when you open your Bible, I know. God has given you thoughts. God has given you food. God has given you something that you can share with the body. We are a body, saints of God. So your body, your, your vessel itself preaches every day. Look what the Lord has done, especially if you're saved. But even if you're not saved, if you, if you don't know anything about God, still once in a while you ought to look at this body that you're living in and realize that this is a miracle. You might not be good looking. You might not be rich, but you're a miracle if you're alive. And the Bible says, let everything that is breath, praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. 
And so we are alive and we're breathing. And that's a miracle. And the, the, the way the body is made, how it is so much like the earth, the world, 75, about 75% 75 is water on the earth. About 75% is water in your body. The sun has got to shine on your body for you to get your vitamin D and the things that you need. We got to have sun. When, when you feel a cold or, or something trying to come around your neighborhood, you got to get a little bit more sun because the sun kills bacteria, kills all these things and gives you the fighting chance. But if you're always inside the house playing games or watching TV or on the internet, no wonder a lot of our people in this world are sickly. It's not because God has forgot to shine upon us. It's because we, we don't take time to get outside and enjoy the sun. It, it is the way we're made. God made us like that. It's not a coincidence. The scientists say, whoa, I guess we got to have the sun. Well, duh. We've got to have the sun. So our body, a great preacher every day. I don't care how young you are or how old you are, or middle-aged. Your body is a miracle, and it preaches every day. Amen. And if you don't think that it preaches, you let the body get sick. Oh, Jesus, help me. That's why the Lord said, you know, uh, when, when, when you gave a little drink to somebody else or gave them a little food. Now, I, 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 like, I like the way that this says it. Because a lot of times when God begins to talk to us about, oh, you know, you see somebody in need, you need to help them. What's the first thing the devil throws in your mind? Well, you can't save the world. You can't save everybody, right? Anybody ever thought of that? Well, I can't, I can't feed everybody. You see people on the side of the road with their little signs. I can't give everybody 10 bucks. I don't have the way, what with all, to help everybody. But I like what it said. And the kings shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto, how many? One. One. <laughs> Can you help someone today? Can you have the time to share the word of God with one today? I can afford that, right? And I, I want to give the devil a black eye. Yeah, I can't save the whole world, but I can reach one. If everyone reaches one, and we can fulfill the word here, because why does God make reference to that beggar, to that hungry person? It says, as much as you've done it unto them, you've done it unto me. Why? Because in him, we live and we move and we have our being. Where are we? We are in Christ. We are in God. God in Christ and Christ in us. <laughs> if you have Christ in you. So... If you have your Bible, say so you want to go with us, Acts chapter 17. And we thought about this Wednesday, but I couldn't get away from this. It's so beautiful. I, I never looked at it this way, but if, if you want to follow or if you just want to listen, Acts chapter 17, verse 24. God that made the world, who made the world God and all the things therein, everything, the cars, pastor, yeah, the computers, yeah. You know, we think we're so smart because we can take this dirt and melt it and make all these things. But who put that stuff in there? Who put the zinc, the aluminum, the gold, the medallion, the, the stones that are precious? All these things were in this world. I don't know if they've ever found a planet anywhere, brother, that, that has all this stuff in it. But this planet, isn't it rich? If it wasn't for the stuff that is in this planet, we wouldn't be able to make cars. We wouldn't be able to have air conditioning. We'd be burning up inside of here right now. But all these things, the Bible says, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, we want to put God somewhere way over there in heaven. God, you stay over there, okay? Thank you for the world. Thank you for the air. Thank you for the oxygen. But you stay there and we're going to stay down here. We're going to create our own kingdom and we're going to save ourselves without God. AOC and Joe Biden and don't get me started for all these guys that they, they, they want to take away our fossil fuels that they, they want to take away all the gas and all shut it all down because we're killing ourselves we're not killing ourselves 
I said, we're not killing ourselves. But if they can make you think that we're killing ourselves, then, well, we everybody gets scared. Oh, yeah, shut it down, shut it down. And then they're going to turn around and, and they're going to take something else that belongs to God and they're going to make batteries or whatever and they are going to be the saviors of the world. But my Bible says that heaven and earth is going to pass away. When the time comes in another thousand years, there's enough oil to last us another thousand years that the seven years the, the seven uh, thousand years, a, a thousand years of peace on earth. God has promised that it's just around the corner after the great tribulation. But I'm saying there's enough oil, there's enough gold, there's enough food for, for the whole world. God made provision. This is the God that created the heavens and the earth and there is enough provision. But they're trying to make us think like we're running out of food. We're running out of this and that and the other. They're saying we're out of formula. Didn't they say we're out of formula? But yet other countries are sending videos. Look, our shelves are full of formula. Mexico. A lot of formula in Mexico. Right across the border. In the warehouses, formula for the babies of the illegal aliens. So it's not a shortage. They're just making us think that we're falling apart and, and we need the Democrats. We need Joe and we need Kamala Harris and we need all these people. And nothing wrong. I'm not condemning them. I'm not speaking evil of them. I wouldn't want anything to happen to them. I don't want anything. Somebody go over there and do anything. That's not what we're preaching. But what we're preaching that is our God, all the heavens and the earth are his. And he dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life. He sells life? No, just gives it to us. And beareth and all and breath and all things. When he says all things, that's everything. Your video games that you have, your movies that you see, all that, it all belongs. It was made from the things of the earth. They didn't go out into space anywhere and got the stuff. It was right here in this earth that God created. And hath made of one blood all nations, a man of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. And have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitations that they should seek the Lord. Why? That they may seek the Lord. Are we forgetting something, America? Yeah, we're forgetting to seek the Lord. We took all the goodies and say, okay, God, leave us alone. But God is not going to leave us alone because it all belongs to him. It's all his and it belongs to him. But it says they should seek the Lord. If happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Your body, that temple that you dwell in, it, it's all in Jesus. It, it all con it, it's all connected. The, 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 the scientists and all this is we got a feeling that we're all connected. <laughs> We are connected because we're all in God, in his, in his thought processes. He involved, the Bible also says, he involves himself in the affairs of man. And he says, if you seek him, you're going to find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Where is God out there in the, in the Milky Way? No, he's close right here. I feel his presence in the house right now. I felt his presence when we began to pray. When we sing, I feel his presence. The world cannot see. The world cannot feel. But if you've got the Holy Ghost that is inside of you, that makes contact with a God that is in the room. It's not three persons. It's one person. And in him, the Bible says, and we're going to read that, that they should seek the Lord if happily. I was happy when I found him. Amen. When he found me, really. For in him, we live and move and have our being as certain also of your poets have said for we are also his offspring the devil hates you <laughs> the devil hates your pastor right. you know what the devil even hates the sinners that serve the devil right. he hates them too why because they're an offspring of god right. god made them in the womb for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. 
Have you ever seen a man make a child or, or a human body? No, this is a miracle that nobody with their hands can put together. They manipulate the bodies. They, they, they're trying to make a woman out of a man and so on and so forth. They, they just take what God has done and try to manipulate it. But I'm telling you what, no man can form a child. No man or a woman can make a, a child in a lab without getting something from, from the, the bodies that God has already ordained in this world. And the Bible says that the God head is not like unto gold or silver. Now, how can we understand that? Are you made out of gold and silver? Are you made out of wood? Or are you a, a being that is able? Brother Raymar, you, you are free. You are free to do whatever you want. You can serve God or not serve God. You try to get your family to serve God. Some of them will and some of them won't. Why? Because they are in charge of the temple. But I'm saying when you get the, the revelation and, and the beauty of this temple, that if it doesn't belong to me, it belongs to God. And, and it is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Then you begin to realize, God, you're God and I'm not. And you can't save yourself. You can't heal yourself I, by his stripes. The Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. The Bible says, in the times of this ignorance, what ignorance to think that God is going to be a God of silver and gold and all that. He said, at, at, at that ignorance, God winked at. You know, when you wink at somebody, it's like, you, you're just joking, right? Just teasing, okay? We got a little grandson, we're, we're trying to teach him how to wink. Four years old, and he's already flirting God said at, at one time I winked at that garbage that you guys would make a God out of silver but God is saying look at you <laughs> you're made in the image and the likeness of God and, and you're not made out of wood you're made out of and so your body your 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 functionality your thinking processes your words how do you think God created everything with his hands and his word you just Spoken into existence. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commendeth all men everywhere to repent. What does repentance mean? And I, I've had a lot of different kinds of ways to interpret this word repent. But, but one of the ways that I can understand repentance is when you come to the conclusion. When you've finally been through a lot. Sister Garcia, when you, when you went through all that stuff that you went through. And you concluded, I'm still empty. I make all this money, but I'm still lost. I, I got all these friends and, and seems like they're my friends, but really they're just people that are empty also. And you come to the conclusion, Lord, I, I'm still empty. I need something more than just me. I need more than just the things of the world. I need something, oh God. And God comes and he says, you know what? The reason you feel that way is because you are made in my likeness, but you're not me. It's one thing to be like something, but another thing to be the thing. And we are made in his likeness, in his image, but we'll never be God. I don't want to be God. I don't know how to be God. All I know is to be me. And I know when I am me, I destroy myself. I make bad choices, bad decisions, but praise be to God that God has made a way. He said, I can be birthed into you. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then things begin to change. What happened? I repented. I said, Lord, I, I don't know how to fix this. I'm lost. I'm broken. I've gone down the wrong path. Uh, and you can be in church, you can be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost and still be proudful. Have you ever seen those in church? Especially those that can preach real good or those that can sing real good or those that can play, Brother Angelo, don't ever get that good, okay? Calm down. I could hear him tonight. Anybody heard Brother Little Angelo? He's coming through. But don't ever get so good that well, I don't need pastor, I don't need nobody. I think I'm going to Hollywood. Strap up that base and say, oh, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Saints, for backing me up. But I, I'm going to join the band where I'm going to make a lot of money. No, 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 no. Repentance is say, Lord, whatever I am, whatever I hope to be, it all belongs to you. You're God and I'm not. That is repentance. A lot of people are in church today that are not repentant. They still trying to do their own thing. They think by the things that they do, they're going to save themselves. 
Only way you're going to save yourself if you humble yourself and obey the word of God and pray. God will save you. But a proud and arrogant spirit, God is going to reject that. But a humble heart and a contrite spirit, the Bible says he will not reject. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he shall judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. This one, anointed one, in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Preacher number one, I hope you understood what I was saying. Preacher number one that preaches every day. When I wake up in the morning and when I lay my head to bed, it's preaching to me, I need God. You know, when you go to sleep, who watches over you? <laughs> Somebody could break in the house and take your life. You could step outside a, 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 a flying saucer or something and take your life out or a, a flying, I don't mean a flying saucer like uh, aliens, but somebody could throw a plate, a saucer or something. Something could fall on your head and take your life. You know, people look at me on the motorcycle and say, well, oh man, did you hear about the motorcycle? That got, you know, but every day people are getting killed in cars, airplanes, trains, all kinds of ways. So we never know, right? But praise the Lord that that we, we trust that when my life is done, God is going to take it however he wants but I trust in the Lord, and I'm not my own. I have given my life to Jesus Christ. So the number one preacher, second preacher, is creation. Creation. Look at the tree sometimes. Look at the stars sometimes. Wake up. Wake up, saints of God, and realize somebody made all this. It's not just appeared out of nowhere. I know scientists would like to say, well, it was just a big bang, and, and then here saw this perfection i'm talking about the universe is perfection right. it's not helter skelter everything has got its place there are these uh things that we barely escape is debris actually in in the heavens debris and every year the world has to go in the middle of all these rocks in the middle of all this debris and to us, looking up looks like falling stars, but in reality is debris that is just hanging out in the heavens. And somehow we, we manage to get through all this debris and we see the falling stars. Who is protecting us? The Lord is protect. He's already made the path for this world for however long he wants. But when the time comes, there is no politicians is going to be saving us. There is no... Sylvester Stallone, or there's not going to be somebody on a rocket ship go out there and destroy the comets and all that stuff. One of these days, this world is going to run. The Bible says the stars are going to fall from heaven. The sun will refuse to shine. The, the moon shall be turned to blood. All these things are going to happen for real. They're there already. Scientists already knows that they're there. And one of these days in the rotation, we're going to run. And this thing is going to come. The Bible says the heavens will open like a scroll. When God is done, he's going to roll the heavens back. Creation, creation itself should preach to us. The Bible says in the Psalms, when I consider thy heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? You know how big you look from the moon? That's the nearest star. If you were on the moon and you look down to the earth, you wouldn't be able to see you. You're smarter, smaller than what we would look at a grain of salt here on this earth. And to, to think that the God that created all of that came to mockly tonight <laughs> that ought to make you rejoice. Creation is preaching to us today. The creation that God has created is a verification. There's a man that's going around. He's made a video of everywhere that he's gone asking scientists and all these people and he's searching for truth. And every meeting that he has, it's on YouTube. I don't know what the name of the program is. He says, closer to truth. 
but he's never walked into an apostolic, tongue-talking, holy roller, born-again, heaven-bound believers church. Amen. If he was to come into this house, I would tell him, you know, there is a God that created all these things. He's come close before talking to priests, and, to, and, and they gave a philosophy. I'm talking about more than just a philosophy. It's more than just my, I think, but the Word of God declares that God is the one with his fingers that created the stars and the moon. And to think that he's here today. Amen. Creation. A great preacher. Now preachers like Brother Rios. And, and, and preachers that are preaching all. Right now man there's preaching going on Sister Rios. When you get home you can go on YouTube. Turn on some preachers. Apostolic preachers. You can listen to preachers all night long. And my wife and I we listen sometimes. But they're preaching. But you know those preachers. I'm not going to call them great preachers, Brother Angelo. I'm going to call them good preachers. They're good. They're good because they're preaching the truth, the most of them. So good preachers are like this. Thou, therefore, which teachest others, teachest thou not thyself. How many times have we had Bible studies? And Brother Rios says, teaches the wow, you know, this is blessing me. Right. I'm teaching you, but I'm learning. Right. Amen. That's a good preacher. That's somebody that knows how to preach. Thou that preachest a man should not steal, does thou steal? How many preachers? Today we heard of a preacher. Today we heard of a preacher in Indiana that pastors 400 people. And all the while, he's a pastor. He's a good man. I'm not, I'm not criticizing the man, but he's living in sin. He's got a young girl that comes and cleans the house and there's things going on. And they finally caught him. Saints of God, that we, we, we got to make sure that you're listening to a good preacher. What, what, what is a good preacher is one that lives what he preaches and tries to preach what's in the word of God. Stay in the word. Am I in the word tonight? Am I in the word? Your conscience. Preacher number four, your conscience. It's a preacher that never fails. Your conscience is always there. Little Angelo, you're young, but you got a conscience. And when you're going to do something wrong, your conscience, uh, uh, uh. and if you don't listen, you go on and do that. Your conscience is going to be bothering you. It's like a little preacher that God put in every one of us. But sometimes people keep doing wrong. And I, if you're in the sound of my voice today, if you wonder why things have gone so wrong, is because you keep listening to the flesh instead of listening to that preacher that is inside of you. That preacher never lies. He's never going to lie to you. That preacher tells you, I told you so, but you went and did what the flesh wanted to do. So if you've been listening to the flesh instead of your conscience, it's time that you say, flesh, you're going to have to forget it. I'm going to church today because my conscience is saying you're going to be lost. You're going to be lost. You're going to be lost. Your conscience will never lie. A great, great preacher. Great preacher. That conscience knows what goes on behind closed doors. When you got the door closed, all the lights out, you think you're under the blankets, you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. Guess where your conscience is right there. God gave you that conscience. But if you keep on and keep on, your conscience could be seared. But it is a good preacher. Another great preacher. The man Christ Jesus. Now don't nobody get over here and, and, and call Brother Bernard and say that Jesus was not a great preacher. That Brother Rio said he wasn't really all that great. He was a great preacher. He, 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 he got the crowds. They all gather around 5,000 at one time. This is just the men. And then you, you count in the women and the children. There's more than probably 12,000 people came to hear Jesus. So he's pretty good, wasn't he? But later on, the same crowd that saw the miracles, the blinded eyes opened, the dead raised, all these miracles, they said, crucify him, take him and crucify him. And all the preaching that he had done while he walked on this earth, walked on the water, Brother Angelo, I caught him out there trying to walk on the puddle earlier today. It didn't work. Boot got all wet. But Jesus walked on the water. And, they, and, and, and you know, not, not only did he walk in the middle of the storm, he told the storm, peace, be still. And the whole ocean, boop. 
And they first they were scared because of him, but then they were scared of him because of what manner of man. Is, well, I'll tell you what kind of manner. He's a great preacher. He's a great preacher. And they took and they crucified him. But all the preaching that he did while he was on this earth, nothing was greater than the message that he preached when he come up out of that tomb. And he was alive. All the, all, all the apostles that had gone back to fishing or going back to whatever, once they saw him alive, they got the message. This is more than just a man. This is the word that has become flesh. And the word was made flesh and he dwelled among us. What a great preacher, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. The Bible, another great preacher. I don't know how many people have come to the knowledge of God because they found Grandma's Bible. After Grandma passed away, this is, this is my dad's Bible. And it's all old. And it's got all kinds of markings. My dad would spend hours and hours. Look at the how dirty this Bible is from the fingerprints everywhere just about every page has got something written on it and this time when i was in indiana mama gave me this gave me two one in spanish santa biblia and gave me one in english and they're worn but how many kids how many people after grandma passes away they say well, what is this la santa biblia they begin to read and the word of god what a great preacher that word right there will preach all by itself. Amen. But I'm glad that God has chosen man to take this word and break bread. In case you've never taken time to read the word of God, I'm telling you it's full of instruction. The Proverbs can get you out of poverty. The Psalms can lift you up in the middle. The Lord is my shepherd. Doesn't that make you want to make God your shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I was preaching in the, in the Spanish service that... Belshazzar was weighed in the balance and was found wanting. That has been weighed in the balance and you have been found wanting. But I'm glad that I'm not going to be found wanting because the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. There is nothing lacking if you apply this word. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm going to tell you. Are you ready? Anybody want to hear it? Yes. I hope you're listening, somebody. Because the Holy Ghost is the greatest preacher ever. Right. Oh, Pastor, are you saying the Holy Ghost is greater than Jesus? <laughs> well, I got news for you. In case you didn't know, Jesus and the Holy Ghost are one and the same. They're the same one. Jesus was on the outside. The Holy Ghost is on the inside. Jesus said, I am with you now, but I shall be in you. Guess who is in me? I call him the Holy. You know, you cannot, you know, you cannot have a ghost without a, a person. So the Holy, a lot of people always this Holy Spirit. Because they insist that this Holy Ghost and, and the Father and the Son are three persons. And the Holy Spirit. So they get away from the Holy Ghost. Because the minute you say ghost, that spirit has got to be tied to somebody. The ghost of Matt Rios might appear around here because I've been here so long. That someday when I'm dead and gone, you might still see Brother Rios standing up here preaching. Man, it seems like I can still see him. Why? Because my spirit, my, my, my gestures, everything that I do gets embedded in your head, and you, you might even be able to almost see me standing here. I, I remember Brother Rios when he used to do this, and you say that and all that kind of stuff. And, and, but, but for you to have a ghost, you got to have a spirit of somebody that died. Well, I know somebody that died and rose again, and he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I will send the spirit who the Father will send in what? In my name. Guess what the name of the Holy Ghost is? Jesus. Jesus said the Father is going to send the Holy Ghost in my name. So if nothing else, you can understand that the Holy Ghost has come in the name of Jesus. And so the Holy Ghost, it, it, you got to have the Holy Ghost according to God's word. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 7 through 8, and I'm, I'm bringing this to a close. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons 
which the Father hath put in his own wet power. Everybody understands that, right? They were asking, Lord, is at this time, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Uh, Jesus is getting ready to leave. And so they were asking him, Lord, are, are you getting ready to make us the rulers of the world again? And the Lord answered them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own, there is a word, power, period. Where did God put it? He put it in his own power. Right. So if, if a non-believer reads this, see, you guys don't even know. Why are you even talking like Jesus is coming? Because it says here, it is not given you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in His own power. So it kind of looks like, and to somebody that's interested in trying to find fallacy with the Word of God, these people were not full of the Holy Ghost. That's why the Lord was telling them, it's not given to you to know the times or the seasons. When we begin to preach about the times that we're living in, the seasons that we're living in, you say, well, the Bible says nobody knows the day or the hour, and only the Father knows the seasons and the times. But I'm here to tell you, show you something beautiful, that God said he's going to put it in his own power, but he turns around. So if you're looking for a way out of knowing the times and the seasons, you're going to, you're going to quit right there, right? You're going to stop. But if you just read just a little bit, but... Doesn't that tie something else? Well, you see that word is going to tie something together. So keep on reading, Mr. I don't believe, Mr. Doubtful, Mr. Unbeliever. You need to keep on reading because the Bible says in the very next sentence, but ye shall receive what? Power. The Father is hidden in the power, in His own power. But you are going to receive power. For right now, it didn't make sense to them. What? But in a few days, in a few moments here, they're going to get the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witness unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Are we in the uttermost? Immokalee is way out here. Far, far away from where they were talking at the time. But praise God, the word of God is being fulfilled. The word of God has come to you mockly. The God has given us the power to know these things. This know also, 2 Timothy 3, 1, and I quit. This know also that in the, in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Can we see that today? It's all about me now. Covetous. That, that word covetous means lovers of money. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Oh man, it's everywhere. Unthankful. Unholy. Without not. Wow, what? Did God already know that men are going to try to be being women? That's not natural. But see, you can, you can calm down. These people that are transgender and all this stuff, leave them alone. Leave them to God because they're already, God's already known about this. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers. Can everybody repeat with me? False accusers, false accusers. Remember what they done to Donald Trump? Four years, was it? We're going to bring the whistleblower. We got the whistleblower. We're going to bring it. He's, he's going to confess. He's going to tell us. We got all kinds of proof that he colluded. Blah, blah, blah. Never. Four years went by. False accusers. There in our midst. Incontinent. Fears. Despisers of those that are good. They're trying to kill our chief justices. Intimidate them. Why? Because they stand for what's right. They stand for what's truth. And this world has turned their back on truth. It's all in the word of God, saints of God. Hold on. Just hold your breath. Just trust in God. If God knew it was going to happen, he's got it under a control. Traitors, petty, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. As soon as the 
as soon as the COVID was over, Sister Shaw, we thought, oh, man, the churches are going to get filled to capacity because of the COVID. They're going to see the signs. But COVID now seems to be going by the wayside. It didn't kill us all. But the ones that are left, Brother Raymar, the other day I went by the la lazy thing over there, and they're as far as the eye could see. Uh, RVs, uh, trailers, campers, uh, four-wheelers, boats, everything, as far as the eye could see. What are they doing? Oh, we're having fun. COVID is over. Lovers of pleasure more than there's nothing wrong with a four-wheeler i got two go-karts back there i was trying to get these boys to ride the go-karts for me the other day and they looked at me like mm, i don't know but still there amen the offer is still there nothing wrong with four-wheelers and motorcycles but let's go to the house of god let's go worship god first but they are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of god having a form here's the thing Having a form of godliness. So if, if the devil doesn't get you with the movies and the bars and the casinos and all that other guard, he's going to get you with religion. Here is the religious folks. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn, run. If your pastor says you don't need the Holy Ghost, run. Find you a good apostolic tongue-talking church don't become a part of these people that have a form of godliness. They just have religion. But the Bible says they are denying the power thereof. Where does the power come? And you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost. So when they deny the power thereof, they're denying the infilling of the Holy Ghost because with the Holy Ghost comes the greatest preacher that has ever preached on the planet. The Bible says the Holy Ghost will lead and guide you into all the truth. I, as a pastor, can only guide you so far, the things that I know and the things that God shows me. But the Holy Ghost knows it all. The Holy Ghost knows the Word inside and out. The Holy Ghost will let you know when you're doing wrong. I might not be able to touch everything that is wrong because there are so many things that are wrong. But about the time you start smoking a little bit of weed and say, well, the Bible doesn't say that weed is a sin. But before you put it to your mouth, if you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is going to say, uh -uh, you're a child of God. Those things don't belong in the child of God. And you're, you're going to listen to that Holy Ghost. Why? Because you, now you got power. You got power before you just whatever the devil threw your way, whatever the flesh wanted. But since you got the Holy Ghost now, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And they will have a form of godliness. Oh, let's have church. Let me teach you philosophy. Let me teach you Proverbs. Let me teach you how you can become prosperous, how you can have a lot of money. But they're going to deny the power thereof. From such, and it doesn't kind of be nice to him. No, he says, from such, turn away. Just go find you. Somebody that believes that when you become a Christian, there's got to be a change. Let's stand before I preach all day. I got people waiting on me. My sister and brother-in-law's in town, and we want to go fellowship with them for a little bit. But uh, I'm telling you, this preacher, the Holy Ghost, it just got a hold of me. Without the Holy Ghost, you cannot even see the kingdom of God. Right, right. You can't see it. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a religious man, a ruler of the Jews. The saying came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know. we. What do you mean we? We, the Jewish religious people, we know that thou art a teacher sent from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered him and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So if you've got a pastor, you've got a preacher that doesn't have the Holy Ghost, he can teach you a lot of things, but he's never going to give you the power to change. I want the kind of teaching, I want a pastor to tell me, Get the Holy Ghost, and you shall receive power to understand the things of God, to see the, the things of God. Heavenly Father, we pray today. We're all going to go to our separate homes, but we're, going, we're, we're all going to be without an excuse.
We don't have an excuse at the United Pentecost. We don't want an excuse. We don't have one because you have given us all these preachers that are in our lives. Everything around us speaks of the glory of God. If we could only open our eyes and see that you're God and you're worthy of all our praise and all our worship. I don't want to hold back. Oh, God, I want to worship you. Can we worship the Lord just a little bit tonight? Can somebody clap unto the Lord? Can somebody say, thank you, Jesus? Lord, thank you. It all belongs to you. My breath, everything that I do, my food, my, my raiment, Lord, the shelter. Thank you for all these things that you have given us. In you, in you, God, we live and we move and we have our being. Go with each and every one of us, Lord, and speak to our hearts all day long. Oh, I must worship the King of Kings. I must live for you every time that we obey your word, whether it be thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not bear fall. Any time that we obey your word in any way, shape, or form, it's a worship unto you. Not because the law is going to get a hold of me, I don't care about the law. I care about pleasing God. Go with each and every one of us. Bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless. Shake hands with somebody. Tell them you're glad. If you want your money back. Amen. See my wife. She's got your money.